So today we're going to transfer a file to the BeagleBone Black from Windows 7. And uh, previously I'd only done this using SCP on Linux. Or by, you know, copying to an SD card and then micro SD card and then inserting the micro SD card in the BeagleBone Black. Today we're actually going to use um, a different protocol called PSCP. Um, the overall thing that we're going to do here is basically test uh, an emulator image, a Unix PC emulator image that I tested, uh, sent to a friend. Um, he can't get it to work, so I thought, well, I would download it from the link that I sent him and test it myself. But then, of course, that means that I have to figure out how to get it on the Big Bone Black <laughs> from the Internet. And uh, I'd like to find a way to get it there directly, uh, but I don't know how to do that. So I know how to download it on my Windows machine. And now we're going to transfer it to the Big Bone Black. Now, um, it just so happens that I'm storing this on Google Drive. So if we were to download the image, if we were to download the image, I'll just paste in my bit.ly link that I have uh, that directs to the, to the file on Google Drive. And there it is. It just instantly starts to download. It doesn't really tell me where it is, but I just happen to know that I have it on Google Drive. Or at least I think I know I have it on Google Drive. I guess I don't really know where I have it. <laughs> Either way, I'm going to download it here to my Unix PC folder. There it goes, right there. And then um, I'm going to use what I learned. I actually, what did I do? I just searched for, I searched for pscp.exe, which is what I need uh, to do SCP over PuTTY from Windows. I guess the P stands for PuTTY, but you don't use the PuTTY client to do this. You use a separate executable. Or at least that's what worked for me. If anybody else knows another way to actually use the the client, like right here, to SCP files over, I would love to know how. But so far, this just seems to be for an SSH connection. Um, but anyway, what the Oracle of Google told me is this. Now, um, I thought, well, where do I get this PSCP? Because I don't have it. All I did was download putty.exe. So I just searched for PSCP.exe, and then I come up with all kinds of things. This one seemed to be the most credible. The National Bureau of Economic Research. I don't know what that has to do with the level of, uh, of, of PuTTY or SCP technology, but evidently they use it. <laughs> because they have this very sterile page here, which gives me a link to download it. So, I'm going to download it right here. And um, uh, you can see right there, I've already downloaded that, so I'm not going to do it again. Um, but what I did is I just simply put it in the folder that contains the file that I want to transfer that keeps me from having to type the entire path in the command line. Okay, so then here is some of the commands that I'm going to use. So this is the just notepad here that I'm using to store commands. All right, so here we are. Good old fashioned command prompt, CMD. I got this by just typing CMD right here. And that's what it did. But I'm already at the path that I want to be here, so I won't redo that window. I will, however, copy in a command. So here's what I came up with PSCP.exe. So I'm calling the exe directly. I don't know if I. Let's try it without the exe, first of all because that probably won't be necessary since I'm already in the directory. Space, the source file name right here, and that is the file name that, uh, that I just downloaded right there. Okay. And then space, root at uh, the IP address of my BeagleBone Black, and to put it in the correct emul uh, the correct location for the emulator to use it, I'm going to put it on a folder called root. 
It isn't the root, it's a folder called root, or a directory called root. I'm going to go going black. Um, independently, I'm going to do this. I'm actually going to go here. Huh. I wonder why half the time that doesn't work. That's why. Okay. So I have just used um, a putty, I guess a, you could call it a console, a terminal? A session. Let's call it a session. That sounds right. A putty session to actually log in as root um, to the Big Bone Black here, this particular Big Bone Black. So if I go to present working directory, it shows me that I'm in a directory called root. Now I'm at the root. <laughs> But it's not a directory called root. So I just wanted to make that distinction that we'll be putting this in a directory called root. There we go. Okay. Now, I already have it here, but I'll be copying over it just because I want to demonstrate what I've done here. So, yeah, maybe I want to remove it. So, let's see, name the whole thing. I also discovered that if I right click, it pastes here in this putty session. Okay, now I have removed exactly the file that I want, so I can copy it back. Alright, so I'm going to I'm going to do this command, pscp space file name space root at colon and then path name. And I don't know if this is necessary or not at the end because I'm not specifying the file name. I want it to be the same file name. I'm not specifying a different file name, but I put it there anyway. And um, it works. So here we go. I'm going to copy this, not over here in the putty session, but over here in, um, in the command prompt of Windows. And here I actually need to, I can't just control V, I need to paste. And enter, and look at this. It waits for a minute, and it tells me it's doing nothing. It says nothing. Ah, but here we have this. Look at this status. 3% transferred, 4% transferred. The ETA is 1 minute, 15 seconds. It gives me a status, how many kilobytes, how many kilobytes a second. So this is the same SCP that I'm used to on, uh, on Linux, but uh, I can do it here from Windows. So I'm transferring a file. Wouldn't that be cool? So we'll just wait and watch it because I know that this is very, very exciting and that's why you watch my YouTube videos because you like to watch exciting computer screens do things slowly. I don't know. <laughs> We're going to watch it anyway just so you get the perspective of what the time commitment is for a file like this. What size is this file anyway? Oh, let's see, it's 166 megabytes. 166 megabytes. 167. Well, I wouldn't say that this is like lightning fast. It is over Ethernet, so I don't know exactly why it's, you know, it's a 10100 connection. But that's okay. It's working. And there we go. So over here, uh-oh, forget that. Over here, I guess I just want to uh, see that I've moved it over successfully. And it looks like I have. Let's try that again. I hate that. I hate it when things wrap unnecessarily. All right, here it is. I have transferred it right here. Now we're going to run it. Now uh, this. This Beagle Black is connected to um, one of David Gesswine's MFM emulator boards, and it's currently connected to a Unix PC that is waiting to boot. Um, I'll, I, I'm looking at the screen right now. You can't see it, but all I'm seeing is the screen filling up with the marching boxes because it's waiting for um, a boot device. There is no floppy drive at all, and uh, the hard drive is not yet running because we haven't started it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start this particular emulator 
we're going to start this particular emulator reading. So, I believe... Uh, there we go. So we're in root EMU. And so now, we're going to do a setup EMU. Oh, I guess it's already working. Because I did this before. So this time, um, I'm just going to tell the emulator to start running. I'll make this bigger. I'm gonna tell, eh, I don't like it that big. So of course I make it full screen. How about this? I like that better. Okay. Anyway, I'm gonna paste this in. So as soon as I hit enter, it should actually start the emulator. And I'm looking to my right, and I'm watching the green screen of the Unix PC with the marching boxes. And as soon as I hit enter, I am fully expected to boot. Oh, there it is. Welcome to the uh, loader version 3.51. And over here on the big old black terminal session, um, you can see that there's hard drive activity. So this is what we'd expect it to look like over here. And there it goes. You just see all kinds of activity while it's booting. And I see the very normal boot screens over um, on the Unix PC. So we'll wait for this. And I'm actually going to log in as root and then shut down. And we'll do more boring watching, um, watching the emulated hard drive go. Real exciting stuff. This will take a while. It's not the first YouTube video that I've created where we just watch the um, the hard drive stat, the MFM emulated hard drive status on this MFM emulator. I believe I did a CTIX install on the Mighty Frame. Oh, about a month ago. And I have some other videos where I show this. But here it is, real exciting. Just watching it go. What you don't have is the split screen to see the uh, Unix PC. And that's too bad because you know that's that's the other half. <laughs> that's that's what the computer is doing while it's sitting the hard drive and doing these things. Unix PC beeped at me. Ah! Welcome to the AT&T Unix PC. Please log in. So I'll log in as root. And now I'm going to do a shutdown. So you have to type it right. Now we're shutting down. And all we're doing is watching the emulator hard drive go over here on this screen. So this should take another minute, and it'll be done. Ah, that was pretty fast. Ready to power off or reset the machine? Press return to reboot. Well, I'm actually going to halt uh, the MFM emulator process here on the uh, on the BeagleBone Black by hitting Control C, and that basically interrupted this. It just killed it. And so now, if I were to press return to reboot, the Unix PC would not do anything. Uh, it would try to reboot, but fail because the hard drive is no longer running. And it's right back to where it was before. So now we've actually seen the complete process. We've tested uh, this particular Unix PC image, and um, it does work. 
and uh, also learned how to use um, PSCP from a Windows command prompt to transfer a file to the Beagle on Black over Ethernet. Alright. Well, thank you for watching, and I welcome your comments below, as always.